We're here today with Dale Falwell, Assistant Secretary of Commerce for the Division of Employment Security. Dale, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Lieutenant and, Governor. Well, we are grateful for you to be here with us, and I would say that for most people across North Carolina, it's probably a giant secret what mm -hmm. you've been doing over at the Employment uh, Security uh, Division. And we want to talk a little bit today about what that is, mm -hmm. uh, because we've had great successes in North Carolina over the last four years. We've done great things with uh, cutting taxes, with putting more uh, money into our rainy day fund, mm -hmm. with uh, growing education in the state of North Carolina, the spending on education, mm -hmm. giving teachers raises. Uh, but then we also did this little tricky thing of uh, reforming unemployment in North Carolina and paying back a really, really big debt to the federal government. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what that's about and uh, what you've been doing over there? Well, uh, unemployment insurance is not something that most North Carolinians wake up thinking about, but it's one of the four invisible things that was really in, in afflicting uh, North Carolina businesses in terms of either attracting businesses to our state or to encourage other businesses to grow that are already here. You know, it's safe to say that uh, no governor or no lieutenant governor in North Carolina has ever inherited such a more broken and broke unemployment system as you and Governor McCrory did. Uh, this system, the broke part, was uh, $2.8 billion in debt. Uh, contrary uh, to what some would say, because the Governor McCrory actually signs the request to draw down this money from the U.S. Treasury. So it's uh, a debt owed to the federal government? Owed to the federal government. Buy and the debt is by. Who, who <clears throat> pays that debt? The, uh, the debt is uh, signed off on by the governor of North Carolina. And that debt uh, was used to pay unemployment benefits because there wasn't enough in the trust fund or the rainy day unemployment fund to weather the recession of 2008. And <clears throat> this was the third highest amount of debt in the United States, only behind New York and California. And that's Unbelievable. Two states that we know have right. significant debt problems. That's we right. don't nor normally think of North Carolina in the same boat with those It guys. was a big deal. And uh, when you folks came into office, uh, it was broke. Uh, but it was also broken. Our quality scores were the worst in the United States for the last 15 years, even behind Guam and Puerto Rico. What do you mean by that? What's a quality score? A quality score is where the United States Department of Labor comes in and scores our work product, how well we did. How you're performing. How we're performing. And uh, our, our quality scores for our adjudication department were 12 out of 100. Hmm. And what that should tell your viewers is that, uh, is that we were in a system of paying and chasing. We would just pay out these unemployment monies and then we'd chase them down later. And you know, when you think about just the things we've talked about so far, it's easy, easy to understand how we got such a $2.8 billion debt. But uh, the great news is that uh, in 30 months, the $2.8 billion in, in debt has been repaid and we've built a billion dollar surplus from bankruptcy to solvency in 30 months. But what does that mean? So we, we paid back this debt in record time. That debt mm -hmm. is now off the backs of the state. It's off the backs of the small business sure. owners. Uh, but there was also a penalty on that sure. debt from the federal government. Talk a little bit about that penalty and what that meant to our small business owners. Uh, every year that this debt was outstanding, we were, quote, a little more of a bad credit risk to the federal government, ironically, as many trillions of dollars as they have in debt. They're calling us a bad credit risk. Yeah. But every year, uh, there's something called FUDA, and uh, sometimes with my accent, people think I'm saying food, mm -hmm. but FUDA is federal unemployment tax. And uh, just to be clear, uh, all of our money comes from businesses in North Carolina. We don't get any appropriation from Congress or from the General Assembly. We're an insurance company that's funded all by employers. So every year this debt was outstanding, the federal government increased the sur FUDA surcharges on North Carolina businesses so that our FUDA taxes were higher than 42 other states. Uh, as a result of paying off this debt, the FUDA taxes in North Carolina in 2015 will retroactively go down back to January 1st and that collectively is going to save North Carolina employers $310 million this year. Money that then they can put back into their businesses, they can hire employees, they can innovate with, they can, they can choose what they do with it. The other piece of this is called SUDA, state unemployment tax, much bigger amount. And on the SUDA tax, because it, not only have we paid off the debt, which eliminated the FUDA surcharges, 
But now we have a billion dollar surplus, the SUDA surcharge, which has been in place for over a decade, uh, that SUDA tax will go away for next year. That's another $250 million into the pockets of our businesses that they can use to reinvest. So nearly $600 million we're talking about back in the pockets of our business owners. Again, what are you hearing on the streets as you, as you talk to business owners now? What are they saying to you about this? This is obviously something that has hit their pocketbook pretty hard over the years. Uh, they're very excited. They're going to be m very excited next week because we're informing them of this in the form of our, our letter, that our, what we call our annual charging statement that goes out to all the 200,000 for-profit employers and, and nonprofits across North Carolina. And they're going to be excited because in this letter, they're going to see some language that they've never seen before. Important reductions in your tax rate. That's the headline. Nice. Uh, in, into the body of the letter, it talks about the fact that uh, uh, in order to prevent the over-collection of taxes, I don't think any North Carolinian has ever gotten a letter from the <laughs> any level of government that says sure. in order to prevent the over collection of taxes we've decided that we're going to hit the billion dollar surplus and we're going to eliminate the surcharge for next year and another sentence which i i, well, I let's like let's not let's not breeze over okay. that because you you mentioned earlier that we didn't have a rainy day fund right and now you just kind of breezed by that and said we have a billion dollar surplus in, yes. in this fund. So talk a little bit about that. What does that mean for the security of uh, what sure. you're doing? Well, what it means for the security is that uh, this goes back to what I said in our opening uh, remarks is that I think that, uh, and I can say this with my uh, skills as a forensic accountant, I don't think any governor or lieutenant governor would ever have to deal with this problem again. Uh, we have a billion dollars in the rainy uh, day, unemployment rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. Uh, we expect that to be uh, even larger uh, next year, uh, and we think that we are preparing our agency, this state, and the citizens and businesses of North Carolina with the certainty that they will never be slapped with these surcharges again. Well, a huge success story, uh, you know, just from everything you've done just with your division, uh, we thank you for that. We thank you for the effort that you've put into doing this and uh, transforming the culture uh, within your department as well. That, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, just briefly, talk a little bit about that. Uh, we have uh, four principles which are on our mission statement, which is integrity, ability, passion, compassion for the unemployed. But there's another word that we always talk about, which is courage. This lady, uh, Tarsha, she told me this story last night. I've often wondered why we would load the unemployment debit card of North Carolina, which is how a lot of people get their benefits, before the deadline that the employer had to respond back to us as to why somebody's no longer employed. When I first started looking into this lady's idea, I realized that one-third in 2013, 70,000 claimants put this magical words on their claim form, lack of work, because they knew they could pass go and start collecting their money. Mm -hmm. And over 70,000 of those, it wasn't really a lack of work. So just ideas, the courage of sure. individuals like this. And the second one was the, the uh, fo requiring a photo ID. Most of your viewers understand mm -hmm. that you have to have a photo ID to get a job in the United States. So if it's a requirement for employment, why should it not be a requirement for unemployment? Sure, basic common sense. So when I did this, uh, we, we had great response from the media, actually, all across the state, because it was a huge way of cutting down on fraud. Yeah, well, uh, thank you again. I think that this is a, just a great example of what good governance looks like across the board. You know, we, we came into office, you were actually uh, in the General Assembly, and uh, the state uh, at that point, uh, the Republican administration and the General Assembly, they uh, inherited a, a quite a big uh, uh a debt, if you will, in a lot of different areas. And mm -hmm. what we decided was we're not going to kick that can mm -hmm. down the road. And so good governance looks just like this. That's right. Well, thank you for your service. Thank, thank you, you for, for having us. Yeah.